Hey there, interactive developers. Jack Delora here with the Interactive and Immersive HQ. In this video, we're going to take a look at some updates made to the DMX pixel mapping functionality in Unreal Engine 5.3. We've got a newly refreshed user interface along with a couple of additional features that have been added, and we're going to dive into all of that in just a moment. For this project, we're going to use the DMX template, which is found under Film, Video, and Live Events in the new project window. Once the project has opened up, we're going to go ahead and click on the Maps folder in the Content Browser. We're going to be using the pixel mapping level today, so go ahead and double click on that. And we have now loaded up the level. With that complete, let's go ahead and click on the DMX folder. We'll see here that we have already a DMX PM underscore pixel map asset. And this is a kind of default uh, pixel mapping setup that we're not going to use as is, but I wanted to at least open up and um, start playing the DMX and head into play mode to make sure that we can see the output of the pixel mapping. So what you might have to do in your particular case is to flip receive DMX off once when you enter into play mode. Uh, you can then turn it back on and it should should be fine. But uh, I believe this is basically the same as um, clearing the DMX buffers in the activity or channel monitors. Either way, it uh, starts things working on my end and allows us to see the output of our work later on. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the play mode there. We're not going to need that for our particular example. We're going to be working with a different texture than this current capture uh, that is set up. And with that complete, let's go ahead and head to our pixel mapper. So although we've got this already set up, I want to kind of walk us through uh, starting fresh with the pixel mapping window. So I'm going to Hit stop playing DMX at the top here. I'm going to delete this fixture group and I'm going to delete this pixel mapping source. So here we are in what is essentially the same as a new pixel mapping asset, although you'll see an Unreal Engine asset in the center here instead. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to add our source. So this is the texture uh, or other type of asset material, et cetera, that we are going to be using to map uh, the pixels to our DMX fixtures. And by default, as I said, when we add a source in, we're going to end up with this Unreal Engine for texture, which is totally fine, but not what we're going to be using. So if we want to pick then a different texture, we can come over here to the details panel. We've got the input texture option here. And I think now would be a good moment to maximize this. I'm going to click the drop down here. And what I'm going to use for this example today is the UV. Um, actually, it's not underscore UV editor color grid underscore color asset. It doesn't have to be any particular asset. I just find that because of the amount of detail and scale of this asset that it actually works well for learning about the new features that we've got available. So I've gone ahead and I've loaded that up. And from there, we can actually start taking a look at our new features. So before that, I've just hit the zoom to fit options on the designer in the center and the preview at the bottom. And then we can head straight down this list to the filtering section. So this is the first of our new features that we're going to look at in the pixel mapper. And what we have now in the pixel mapper is the ability to apply downsampling to our texture, whereas before we would have to use an external blueprint or tool to do this. So what that means is uh, we can simply increase the number of downsampling passes. And this is going to, with each additional pass that we add to our downsampling, we're going to be reducing the width and the height of this texture by two. So we can really make this very small. Um, and right now what's happening is 
uh, that our texture, although it is in fact being downsampled, it's then being scaled up to fit the original size of the texture. And with the output size mode, which is the next option here, we can actually choose how this behavior would function. So um, right now it's at the same as input. And so if we mouse over that, uh, this is how the texture is going to be resized after filtering. So it's going to be again scaled back up to its original scale. But if we choose, for example, let me just reset the down sample passes back to zero. If we choose the down sampled option, we're going to see the actual scale of that texture now that it had it has been down sampled. So you can see once we even get up to, you know, four passes of downsampling, we have a really, really small texture compared to the original. We also have the ability here to set a custom size, and then you can specify the width and the height. So for particular scenarios where you need a, a customized uh, width and height, that is a great option to have. So I'm going to set this back to same as input. And then we have the ability to apply filtering to the texture right here as well. So what that means is I can choose a filter material and then we're going to search for M underscore blur, which is a built-in material that comes with this particular template that will apply a blur to the texture that we're working with. So you can see as soon as I've selected that, we now have blur applied to this texture. And if we move right along in the list of settings here, we have the ability to apply this material with each pass. And that means that for every downsampling pass that we apply to the original texture, we are also going to be applying a blur to each pass as well. The difference here is that if we're downsampling three times, we'll apply the blur three times. And if we turn this option off, we're only going to be applying the blur at the very last stage meaning essentially that we'll have less blur being applied to our texture by turning this off. Below that, we have the blur distance parameter, which allows us to, if I, let me turn the down sampling here back to zero. If I increase this value, you can see that the amount of blur also increases. So that's a, a way that we can have access to this uh, materials parameters right here in our editor. And what's cool about the blur distance parameter specifically is that we have the ability to customize what this particular parameter is modifying in this material. So you can see in the advanced section, we have the ability to supply the name of the parameter in the material that we want to modify. So we don't necessarily have to be using this for the blur distance. We could uh, make another parameter that's useful to us accessible. So with all of that said, uh, those are some new features over here in the details panel, which definitely make things a little bit easier to uh, work with. Now let's go ahead and look at the rest of the window. So I'm going to come over here next to the DMX library tab. And this is along with the hierarchy window. These have been updated to kind of bring them to parity with the DMX control console, which now has a similar sort of functionality. The idea here is that we can selectively uh, choose which fixtures or patches in our selection of uh, lights in our DMX library we're going to actually use for pixel mapping. So to use this, we're going to start off by clicking on add fixture group at the top. This is going to add this DMX library option. We're going to click the drop down here and then choose DMX lib underscore pixel mapping for the particular DMX library for this template. You'll then see that we have a list of all of the patches in this library. And just like we were talking about in the console, we can selectively choose which one of these patches we want to add into our DMX or our uh, pixel mapping setup, that is. So I can choose to add one individually by clicking on the one that I want and then hitting Add Selected Patches. We'll see then that it appears down here in the hierarchy section. And also, even though it's very small, it has appeared in the designer window as well. And it has disappeared from the DMX library list of available patches. So this is a, again, this is kind of allows us to both 
selectively choose which uh, fixtures we want to add to our pixel mapping setup and also keep track of which fixtures we have or have not added into this mapping setup. I'm then going to go ahead and hit add all patches, which is going to add all of the remaining patches that were available in the library. The hierarchy window here will give us the ability to click on these patches individually, and then we'll have settings that we can modify over on the right, including things like color space, how we're dealing with RGB, quality, etc. And uh, also things like output modulators, which are always fun. Um, so this is how we can kind of interact independently with our fixtures in our scene. And again, also keep track of what is in our group. So um, with that said, our fixtures have been added into our designer window. They're just very small along the top of this texture. And so what we're going to do here is to now use the handy layout functionality. So I'm going to first make sure that I've clicked on the fixture group option over here on the left. And then we're going to come over here to the layout option on the right. I'm going to use, uh, well, assuming that this drop down is open, which you may have to do, I'm going to click on the layout script class option and grab the grid layout option there. What that has done is for each one of our patches, we now have a essentially a, a single row that's the full width of this texture assigned to each patch. Uh, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for our use case here because these are uh, you know single lights and they are uh, aligned in a grid. But the layout that we have available to us over here allows us to automatically lay things out in a grid. So thankfully, we can just make some changes to get that all set up. So I'm going to then set the number of columns to five, and it will have automatically set the number of rows to five as well. You can see then that I've got a nice five by five uh, grid set up. Each one of the fixtures now has uh, a square shape, and they're all exactly the same size. I also want to point out that we can increase the padding value here to add a little bit of space in between these uh, different boxes in our designer section as well. And for this, because the, the scale of this texture is quite large, we're going to have to increase the padding uh, you know, pretty significantly for it to make any difference. But once we get into the, I don't know, 10 to 50 range of values, you can see that we then have a nice amount of space added in between those uh, different boxes. The last couple of settings here allow us to specify the snake order in which we should refer to our lights. Now, if we wanted to, say, manually move the position of a single light or a couple of lights together, we can always click on that particular light in our designer window and click and drag to move it around in space. If we wanted to, say, scale this entire group, we could come up here to the Layout menu and see we have here an option called Always Select Group. So what would happen then is if I click on any of the lights within this grid, they've all now been selected. And I can then click and drag from the bottom right corner to scale them all as a group. One last thing to point out here is that each one of our fixtures or patches in this grid also have some identifiers, which are a little bit hard to see with this particular example. But you can see up here in the upper left corner, we've got the name of that particular patch. And with this layout drop down, we can also add things like the patch info and the cell IDs to this little preview as well. And those will appear down here in the bottom. Normally, we won't be dealing with a texture as large as this one. This was just for this particular example. So it will, uh, it will be a little bit more visible and larger in scale than what we're seeing at the moment. That's it for the new features in this window. So what we can do now is to hit the Play DMX button. And assuming that everything is still functional from before, we can see that the lighting in our scene is now outputting those color values that we saw in the preview. So I hope this has been an interesting and useful look at some of the new features added to the DMX 
Pixel Mapper in Unreal Engine. As always, thanks so much for watching. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.